Welcome back to the fourth episode in this Halloween special from Copper Fox. Um, again, I want to remind you that these are true stories, first hand from people or second hand from people that they know personally or family members. I believe we were stemming on to Katrina and she was telling us about a story because she works in, I don't know, this is probably derogatory to say, but a mental hospital or Same time with ghosts. how would you how would you describe how would you just <laughs> how would you describe it Tara a psychiatric hospital yeah. yeah so we'll start this uh, and I, I should probably address what happened at the end of the last episode um, we'll, I'll give you the, fa- the the fake story and then the true story so the fake story is is that there was a ghost and um, it picked up a glass and threw it at the wall and then all the glass went everywhere and it was a full coke and whiskey and it spilled it all over my laptop or the true story which is basically I pointed at the whiteboard and spilled my drink everywhere <laughs> so anyway we're going to pass you over to the next section of ghost true ghost stories from Katrina so here we go so I used to work in a different psychiatric hospital um, about two years ago and it was like a known thing that like we had these alarms on us so it was obviously so we could press them in case and we still do have them in case anyone attacked us or someone was like I suppose decompensating a lot so we could press the alarm we could get extra staff in case we needed I'm sorry everyone's doing cheers um, so this was like a common thing that we all had so we all kind of knew that every so often sometimes in the middle of the night these alarms go off they'd also alert us if there was like a call in the room so similar to like a general hospital if someone called on a bell in the room it means that like you're to go to that room and just check and see if everyone's okay so that would sometimes go off in the middle of the night and sometimes it would go off on an area like it'd say like bedroom 14 and there's only 13 bedrooms on the ward or something like that so it was really weird so this was kind kind of common knowledge so i was on nights one time and i was one of these kind of things went off and i checked obviously there was no bedroom 14 or whatever and i went i went back and there was kind of an older nurse with me and i was kind of saying to her that this you know was after happening and i was kind of joking saying there's a ghost um and she ended up telling me about a story and she said she could verify it herself so this was a number of years ago so say the person who was the manager of my ward at the time she was just a staff nurse she was a young staff nurse and the way my hospital was laid out there was three floors and it was kind of made out like a circle and in the middle it was like a donut and in the middle of this donut was like a garden so the bottom floor was like a care of the elderly ward and a children's ward and this person was working on the care of the elderly ward and they just so happened to be looking out into this garden and it was the middle of the night and when they were looking out into this garden they seen this person just walking across the garden and they kind of just kept on looking because they were like who the fuck is that person what is going on and at the time the children's ward was being refurbished so there was no patients in there and all of a sudden an alarm so it wasn't a call alarm it was a staff alert so it means that every staff member someone from every ward has to respond because there is a medical emergency or there's a psychiatric emergency which means that someone you know was so critically unwell that they need to be possibly restrained or whatever and this staff alert went off so everyone responded so say like 14 staff members responded to this ward that was empty and they went around the entire ward and there wasn't one person there obviously because the place was being refurbished and they were like why did the staff alert go off there should no one even had an alarm it was weird and on the way back this person was talking to another staff member and they were kind of saying it was so weird because just before that happened i thought i seen a person like a ghostly apparition walking across the garden and it was really weird and that person said oh my god you've seen her too and three other staff members corroborated with this and saying that they, they were also looking out into this garden and they seen this person walk across the garden into that children's ward and then the alarm went off. 
So it was really weird. Now this uh, this hospital that I was working in was really old. Um, it was around since like the fucking 1700s I think at this stage. So I had... <laughs> Sorry, that's a ghost. <laughs> so I had a load of really weird stories where like we had like a main hall and um, back in like the 50s and the 1900s the staff members and the patients would have these big balls and it was really weird and felt strange. And I remember there was an instance where I was... Sorry. Where I was... Um, bring a bag of cans. Bring a bag of cans. <laughs> Drink a can. Right, so, cut. <laughs> Delete like, this. Like, yeah, no, I'll just keep on going and you can cut it. So I remember there was this story where there was a patient who happened to go missing off my ward and there was a protocol that was followed. So basically there had to be an entire search of the hospital, a sweep of the hospital. And when this sweep happened, you had to check everywhere. So every single ward, every single random nook and cranny. So I had done an entire sweep of this hospital and now behold, the person came back the next day and I was fine, they were out on leave, whatever. But I just so happened to be talking to my friend who happened to be there a lot more time than I was there. And she was saying, oh, did you check whatever place? And I had this weird Irish name. And I was like, no, sure, what is that? Because at the time, I suppose, we knew the entire hospital. but So we were just like, oh, yeah, we'll just check everywhere. And we just ticked off when we came back that we had done everywhere. But she said it was this place on the third floor. And this was like the old part of the building. And there was loads of offices there. So we had gone up and when you go up, it's three flights of these really old rickety stairs. And she was like, I'll show you. And it was a random Sunday. So we went up and we checked it. And this place for the six years that she worked here, the door had never been opened. And on the day that we went up, the door was opened. So we decided we're going to go in and have a look. So this was the really old part of the hospital. The only thing that was in it, there was like six or seven rooms across and we went walking through all of them. There was religious paraphernalia, so there was crosses everywhere. There was all these pictures of like Mary and Jesus and all this kind of stuff and dead birds. Real dead birds? Hundreds of dead birds oh all over got, this place. How would they have gotten in? We don't know. Like we don't know whether, I don't know, windows were open or what the crack was. But there was all these dead birds and we were just like, this is so weird. And then in the corner of one of the rooms was this room and it was smaller than a box room. Like you couldn't even say it could barely fit Charles' bed in it. But it was a room nonetheless. So we were kind of like, what in God's name would have been in here? And we kind of have joked terribly that it was a seclusion room back in the day because obviously we still have seclusion rooms but they're obviously much better and all that kind of stuff. So we were kind of half joking maybe it was a seclusion room. And so she said, oh, I'll shine the light in and see what's in it. And it was the weirdest thing I've ever seen because she shone the light in and it was like a darkness that absorbed light. Because when she shone the light in, we could not see anything. It was still pure black. There was nothing to see. And she herself, who was like kind of a sceptic, turned around and said, no, this is bad juju. We should leave. And both of us kind of felt at that time. We were like, no, this is very strange. We should leave. This is not right. And I've never seen both of us. And we are obviously both quite, you know, sane people to be working in the job that we're in. You know, it's it wouldn't be a thing that we'd be weirded out by certain stuff because I suppose we come into contact with weird stuff all the time and both of us as quick as we could got out of that place and closed the door behind us and from that day to this I've never seen that door open and it was just that one day that was open and it was so weird it was really strange and it was probably one of the weirdest experiences I've had sorry something randomly fell off one of the dressers um, but it was probably one of the weirdest experiences I've had in like a psych hospital um, and it's really strange because obviously we come into contact with random stuff and like people obviously saying that they're the devil and all that kind of stuff and that weirded me out of all of the stuff that weirded me out this is a just a question right you know the way the, obviously if you're let's say no, how would I, how would I talk about it spiritually weak mm. obviously the whole theory behind of like demons being able to intercept with your soul and stuff is the fact that 
you don't really believe, have no real strong belief in anything that can really protect you and stuff like that. Do you think because people with mental, what would you call it, mental health mental health, health issues, issues are not weak minded but have a weakness in vulnerable. Evo- you have kind of like vulner- more vulnerable think they're more susceptible to paranormal experiences like that like if there was to be a demon it would attach themselves to someone who would like it's just like a trick isn't that like the ultimate trick being like this attaching themselves to a person who Hide. no one would believe anyway like hiding in plain sight exactly so thing, yeah. what do you think about that um, as a person who like walks with people with mental vulnerabilities I should never go back to work <laughs> <laughs> personally like in fairness I can't really like I can't really argue with the fact that anyone I've ever come in contact with like I definitely think that people have like a sixth sense or like a feeling a gut feeling and like we would go off that in kind of nursing and stuff like that where we would say we have a gut feeling about something but I don't think I've ever come across someone who said like that they're the devil they're Jesus they're any you know they're hearing spirits or gods or things like that I've never come across somewhere someone where I felt no they're actually gen like yeah that's genuine I've never felt strange around someone I definitely think that you know they are mentally unwell I'm sure there is some type of precedent oh sorry the mic moved Um, I definitely think there is probably some type of precedent for people who are a little bit more vulnerable for things like that to happen but no one that I've come across has now when saying that there is a weird phenomenon within psychiatry where you can have people who are very unwell like they generally have depression and stuff like that and they can have um, basically where they become so depressed that they become catatonic and that's kind of stuff so that's basically where someone can go to the state where they don't eat they don't drink they don't move because they're so depressed they're so manic they're so unwell that they actually don't move um now i've never seen like i've seen people who are catatonic to the point where they don't eat they don't drink they they stay in bed and you have to force them to do everything but there have been i suppose um records of people who they contort into odd yeah. ways wow. and this is where a lot of people who say that they you know possessed, possessed and stuff like that comes from and then it's disproved that they're not possessed where people can contort into these strange positions that they never would have been able to before and they'll stay in them positions for hours and hours and um, they can let out obviously strange noises where obviously their lungs and stuff like that are under like immense pressure um, I've never seen it I've heard of you know very senior colleagues where I've seen people who contort into these very strange positions they generally sometimes they happen in front of like exit ways so you kind of just have to move people out of the way um, so they're not in the way of exits and stuff like that that would kind of freak me out I think personally because of my own belief system Um, not that I would think that they're not unwell because I probably would but I'm sure just the idea of I suppose being a Catholic and yeah. understanding what mm-hmm. you know exorcisms are and possession is yeah. that would be very strange for me but I've never personally seen I've only seen people who are so unwell that they have to kind of stay in bed I suppose this is well just snowballing off that years ago people who have had like depression that bad and Tourette's and being what's that called schizophrenia and saying that they've heard voices like or they probably would have had exorcisms and stuff like that like you have to factor that in you know but in saying that obviously like fucking hell like that is as valid as mm-hmm. fucking opening you know yeah but it also makes you think as well if someone is that mentally vulnerable that they're that mentally compromised kind of like what like a priest coming in would that validate themselves to act more like that's the way they think they're supposed to act well, because that validates in their own mind that yeah, oh this is because yeah, of yeah you know well, what i mean well, but yeah. but then again but then again just just to finish this little statement right then again how would you explain people speaking ancient languages when they persist because yeah. like you can't just yeah. speak a different language it's I, I, I well, you can't. actually can't you actually can't no but uh okay well, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> i I personally can validate that like I can't because I haven't seen anyone speak in different languages but there has been cases there has been cases of that happening and there's also been cases of people who were known to be very mentally unwell who felt that they were possessed and a priest has been brought in to do a quote unquote exorcism 
because that was what quote unquote was was you know cured them and that's in modern medicine where they felt that the best thing is if they their own family wanted to get in a priest and exercise them yeah, and it yeah. yeah but i suppose it's a it's a pseudo kind of yeah. mm-hmm. you know it's it's not that it actually genuinely helps it's just that the person believes enough that it helps that it stops their that's, that's how powerful the mind is that's it, that is how powerful the mind is exactly so like that's the thing these people thought that they were possessed by these things and they genuinely believed that so much that they felt like an exorcism would stop it mm-hmm. and it just so happened that you know by that stage they could have been getting you know very high dose antipsychotics which also helped with the symptoms yeah. you know so it's kind of a bit of both um this segment might be short but does anyone else have any anything else to add with with regards to what she said there anyone want to add anything um, I think, like, with the psychiatric aspect of it i suppose as well like back in the day people were scared shit is of everything because modern medicine hasn't like as i've already said like we what's that called um like schizophrenia schizophrenia yeah. Tourette's <clears throat> it was a thing where people were they say right we'd you'd get them exercise even like only recently well not recently but women who were suffering with hysteria yeah yeah, which was basically depression mm. anxiety they were or sometimes just being a woman or just sometimes oh, being yeah. you know PMS yes, they had yes, you know what I mean come on fuck does not condone what she just said there <laughs> no, she put it out no. there of the time they were just being a person and men were like no you're yeah. mad no like, you're mad and you were put yeah, into sister. yeah, yeah. psychiatric facilities <laughs> and this is where the introduction of the vibrator was because doctors would have stimulated manually women stimulated. manually stimulated <gasps> women to or orgasm which would was meant to cure. relieve alleviate the release the demons, release the the demons within her with the hysteria <laughs> of you know and stuff like that and women were like oh I'm so ruined just so that they would be stimulated by the doctor but this is you know obviously if you've watched like American Horror Story and stuff like that and they're in the psychiatric unit and I think religion is especially in Catholic countries it's so like if you think of Ireland 50 years ago even Jesus 40 years ago it was so closely run by priesthood. the priesthood, priesthood yeah. and the church and Jesus that's a whole different Ball game. We can talk about that's that a whole week. different <laughs> yeah. Jesus uh, yeah that's a whole different fucking argument for another day but it's it's the folklore it's the t- stories it's the treatments it's everything because it's the exorcisms it all leads back to religion and yeah, isn't it yeah. amazing where Marcella herself she's from a country which would have been very heavily involved in the Catholic Church you know and it's just incredible the way 30 years later that we can say that well you know that person wasn't fucking possessed by the devil it wasn't this it wasn't that but that's not saying that these stories these first hand accounts aren't actually real you know realistically we're all saying things that could definitely be counted as um, some type of mental Mental delusion (laughs) or (laughs) like we really are yeah yeah but but what what about when people can corroborate a story like with my story there was two separate sections of the house heard the same thing yeah Yeah. like what are the odds of a shared like mental lapse that's weird well I have have a close a quick question for you Katrina I see it as you are mental health nurse yeah how factual do you think was American Horror Story in terms of like patient treatment and stuff and sometimes you say you like how factual do you think mm. um i think for back in the day it was very fact like it was very factual yeah. and i'm Nor- not gonna and Norse ratchet as well and Norse ratchet it was very factual like i'm not gonna lie about it you know we're definitely taught about i suppose what mental health was like especially back in the day in ireland because a lot of places oh. were ahead of us and it was very much a shameful thing and it was very much like you, you know we're going to push you into compliance you know realistically up until 
I think at the time that I've been alive, paying compliance was a thing. So we yes. obviously, so we obviously learn, um, we have to learn how to restrain patients and stuff like that in circumstances where they're at risk to themselves or others. And unfortunately, none of us like to do it, but sometimes we do have to do it don't. and we have to medicate people. But in my lifetime and people who have trained me in how to do this have said that in their training, they have learned pain compliance where that would basically be um, they would hold people in a certain way and it would twist their wrists in a certain way that it's basically like if you don't do what I say, I'm going to make sure that you're in pain until you do it. So it's basically like sometimes not to get political here but sometimes you know sometimes the way you see the police kind of doing it yeah um and they would oh, bend people's arms and do <laughs> things in a certain that's another, way fucking... that's another episode yeah. but and um, they oh, would do God. things in a certain way until you basically comply with them can we just say black lives matter <laughs> black lives matter but that's another episode <laughs> um but yeah so that was in my lifetime and that was the people who taught me who are one generation not even one generation because they're not as old as my parents above me they are the people who taught me that and they were saying in their training they were taught people they were taught to bend people's arms until they comply and if that like sometimes if that ends up in a break that was part of the job they would try not to break people's arms they would try not hurt people but sometimes that would be how it ends and it's it's very accurate you know sometimes as well the thing that people get shocked at is we still you know do ec3 treatment which is electroconvulsive therapy and um, that's very that's very common nowadays yeah. um is that like it's one, a, one flew over the cuckoo's nest? it is yeah yeah look realistically it is it's not the same way people are given a muscle relaxant they're given an anesthetic um and basically what happens if they is they have a mild seizure um, and it's very, very good in treating kind of um, severe depression and manic episodes. Um, I would be a big advocate for it. But like that, it has a, a very negative connotation because of what had happened years ago in where it was used as a, I suppose... A, 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 fix all type thing. Yeah, fix all type yeah. thing. It was also used as a form of punishment mm. to people. Another thing is lobotomy, like that hysteria yeah, yeah. being treated for, you know being a lesbian or being gay that kind of treatment you know that was all about and that is you know within our parents lifetime that is not you know something that was quite recent that is you know I think it was yeah. the 80s that being I think it was the very late 80s early 90s in Ireland, in Ireland that being gay was actually not classed as a mental illness yeah. anymore mm. so like it, it, it I think it's very accurate for the time um, but it's also very harmful to what people think of mental mental illness now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't realise that this was going to end up as a full episode of basically mental illness. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the Catholic Church. And the Catholic Church. Um, but it is relevant. And if you have anything that you're worried about, please reach out to someone. There yeah. is absolutely no shame. We all have mental health. Some people just need extra support every mm-hmm. now and then. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so please definitely do. And please log on for another episode because that would be great. And we're all here to have a bit of fun. So please do. Goodbye and God bless. I suppose it's important to say that even though those things were accurate for the time, they're not very accurate now. Mental health has come on leaps and bounds. And if you go to any kind of mental health hospital, you will find help. And even if you feel like you're not being helped there, they will refer you on to someone else who is very helpful. There's a million types of different therapies and they don't just include drugs. They include talking therapies, which are very beneficial. And if you need to go on and do anything in terms of ECT or anything like that, they're also very helpful. So don't feel any shame or guilt or anything around that. There's absolutely no shame. So always know that you can go somewhere it's not going to be like nurse ratchet it's not going to be like one flew over the cuckoo's nest and you will find someone who will be able to help you yeah so please if you have anything going on do contact someone and hopefully you will find the help that you need